A background view, unlike what you might expect, is not the page or view itself. Instead, it's the object that is responsible for rendering the content of the view as well as responding to any events raised from there, for example, clicks, drag and drops, press keys, and so on. So background views are more like controllers in the classic MVC terms. Every view has a reference to a DOM element and is responsible for rendering the content of this element as well as responding to any events raised from it. Let's go ahead and create our first view. Creating views is similar to creating models and collections. We use the extend method to extend backbone.view. Let's see what's going on here. The render method is where we implement the rendering logic. This.dollarL is a cache jQuery object that contains the views DOM element. We are using the jQuery HTML method to display a hello world message on the view. By convention, we return a reference to the view at the end of the render method. This helps chaining method calls as you will see shortly. Now let's declare an instance of the view. When instantiating the view, we are specifying the DOM element to which this view should attach to. We are doing this by setting the L property to a jQuery selector string. In this case, we are telling our view that there is an HTML element with the ID of container in our HTML markup. This view will be responsible for rendering the content inside the container as well as responding to any events raised from it. Now let's go to our main.html and create this element. Okay, now let's try it in Chrome. There you go, we got the hello world message. Let's inspect the view object. Note the difference between the L and $L properties. The L property is a jQuery selector that references the DOM element that this view owns. The $L property is a case jQuery object that contains this DOM element. It's faster to use this case jQuery object when we need to reference the DOM element or any of its children, as opposed to constructing a jQuery object using the selector every time. All right, now let's go and make a tiny change to our code. I'm gonna remove the initialization of the L property. Let's refresh the page and see what happens. The hello world message is gone. But let me show you something interesting. We're going to inspect the view again. Okay, let's expand the dollar or property. Note that this property is initialized and is referencing a div. This means that if you don't specify the DOM element when instantiating a view, Backbone automatically creates one for the view. But this DOM element is in the memory. It's not inserted in the HTML markup, and that's the reason we don't see the hello world message here. Let's go ahead and fix this. So we are using the jQuery selector to get the container element, and then we use the HTML method to insert the views DOM element inside the container. Let's try it out. There you go. So the lesson is every view has a DOM element at all times. If you specify a DOM element that exists on the page, the view attaches itself to it. Otherwise, the view will create a DOM element. This DOM element is by default an empty div. Let me show this to you. So let's inspect this element here. Note the div here. We can overwrite the defaults and tell the view to create a different kind of HTML element. 
Let's see how it works. We can use the tag name property to specify the type of HTML element to be created. We can also give it a class, or even an ID, or any HTML attributes. Now let's see the result. Note that this time we have a span with the ID of 1234 with the class song and it also has an HTML5 data attribute. One last thing before we finish this lecture. Earlier I told you we should return a reference to the view at the end of the render method. I told you this is used for chaining method calls. Let me clarify what I meant by that. Using this technique, we can combine these two lines here into something like this. Because the return value from the render method is a reference to the song view object, we can directly access its $L property. You often see this in backbone code examples. So, to create a view, we extend backbone.view and implement the render method. Every view has a reference to a DOM element and is responsible for rendering anything inside that element or responding to events raised from there. We can specify the element when instantiating the view using a jQuery selector. If we don't specify the element, Backbone will create one for the view. This element is in the memory and we need to manually insert it on the page. We can customize the DOM element that Backbone creates for the view using the tag name, class name, ID, and attributes properties. Okay, so you have seen the basic structure of a view, but backbone views are usually, but not always, used along with backbone models. In this example, when our view was rendered, we saw a static hello world message. In the next lecture, I will show you how you can pass a model to a view. This way, we can render the view based on the values of the model's attributes. Thank you for watching.